Well, the concrete uh, action that has been done by the European institution is the Commission introducing these initiatives of legislative proposals known as the European Citizens Initiative. And uh, this gives possibility not just to European youths, but it could be used as a platform for them to engage with the legislative process. Do you think there is actually sufficient awareness uh, of this option among young people based on your experience, Charlotte? Well, I would say no, to be honest. I do not think that there is sufficient awareness among young people. I mean, when you look at the requirements for the ECI, essentially you need to collect one million signatories um, and you also, of course, need to organize it um, appropriately. But especially when you talk about youth movements, it is something that could be a very valuable opportunity for young people and for larger groups of young people that do have the same interests. We talked about policy domains that are important for young people today, which are, for example, climate change, among others. Um, but essentially, if you look at the numbers of the ECI so far, only nine um, initiatives reach the required number of signatories, whereas 100 were initiated since the introduction of the initiative uh, of the European Citizens um, Initiative in um, um, in the Lisbon Treaty. And essentially, that does show when you look at um, 400, approximately 450 million European citizens that there is no extensive use of this of this opportunity. Um, but essentially, as I said, for movements, for larger groups with that share common interests, it can be a very valuable and opportunity, and it has a high potential for young people to be able to directly introduce their ideas, introduce their priorities into European politics, and to make sure that, and it also is partially a way to make sure that their interests are being represented. And therefore, I believe that this issue should, or this opportunity should receive more awareness for sure. Mm -hmm. What about your experience, Clara, with you coming from Berlin and also studying in Brussels? Do you think there's actually volumes or noises around this uh, initiatives? Because I personally find it very uh, amazing that the commission has this platform because I can only judge where I'm from, Indonesia, and there's nothing like that. There's like an affirmative action coming from the institution giving the option and possibility for the young people or others uh, to create initiatives for being more involved in the legislative process? Um, I would say from my experience, both in Brussels and Berlin, um, there is no awareness on these initiatives. People don't know that this is an option. And it's crazy because, I mean, I read up a little bit on it. And um, I mean, to start such an initiative, you need to um, have a committee, you need to find a committee um, with representatives from seven different member states in which the signatures have to be collected. And although that does seem maybe in first instance a bit complicated, it actually shouldn't be because most of the policy interests that young people have, they're of global or European concern. And then we talked about you have um, the, these digital platforms that youth is using extensively so connecting one another, um, you should easily get to one million signatures. Um, so yeah, I think it's an awareness issue. Um, well, you already mentioned about the procedure, how we would need uh, seven different representation from different countries. You coming from, Ismail, coming from uh, this youth forums where you have higher, so to say, leverage than to mobilize uh, people that then could utilize this platform of uh, citizen initiative from the commission to get more involved. What do you think has been the challenges uh, to utilize this initiative? I want to get back uh, on what Clara said because she's, she, she's completely right. I mean, I'm going to give credit where credit's due at some point. I, I'm not just going to always criticize the European Commission and the EU institutions. They have done quite a bit comparison when you compare to lots of areas around the world. <laughs> to engage in people. There's another initiative by the, I think, comms of the European Commission. Um, it was Youth Voices. Don't take my word for it. I, I forgot the exact name of it, but uh, it's where you can send uh, voice notes to, to commissioners, essentially, of, uh, so young people can, um, can engage in that. There was uh, the policy dialogues done last year. That was a follow-up on, um, on the Conference on the Future of Europe, right? So we met with every single EU commissioner. 
we took a delegation from uh, well the youth forum was there lots of different and even organizations not re- uh, in the youth forum even youth organizations not in the youth forum it's not just youth forum representatives um so we we did have the chance to discuss with them um i mean there are initiatives out there right of course a lot more can be done that's why we're here to say what can be done more and then how can we we increase that participation and young people getting involved politically but um when it comes to that when it comes to communications and reaching out to the non-usual suspects at the grassroots local level that's where it becomes complicated we ourselves we can say yes we represent young people why because we have our platform to prove that so we have organizations and every single well, most um, continental european countries they themselves have their own organizations on a local level so all that information comes from the local back to us we have our processes to 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 back that up of course not every young person is going to know what who the european what the european youth forum is but our, but our members do do the due diligence and their work on a grassroots level enough for it to be able to claim that we represent young people um so there's something we have been calling a lot towards the european commission is how do we get all this information at a local level how do you get young people to get informed right it's mainly just information i come from a very small town in spain that's where i grew up 5000 people in my hometown in spain and they have no idea what's going on like nothing like even me <laughs> every time i go back they they, they think i'm i'm like i'm an mep or something they have no idea what happens in the uh, in brussels which i'm not by <laughs> 100% but anyway uh, so they have no idea what's going on they have no idea about the different uh, initiatives even when you just come to volunteering i have every two days easily someone from my hometown because they know oh yeah contact this mail just for things as simple as where can i go to volunteer i i, I, I want to do a volunteering project where where can i go i said okay well i need to send uh, x amount of links and some amount of projects you can get involved in this and that and that um so communication is a big issue and again through digitalizing let's say the communication channels and where to get involving more national regional and local authorities and all of this i think local authorities have a big role to play so they also need to get a little bit more interested in how they can reach out to the to the young constituents let's say in their local areas we can't do everything from here uh, europe is so vast some places we, we can't reach out to by purely logistical reasons um but local political representatives do have a role to play and they have an obligation to also get their youth more involved and uh, they themselves are proportioning that information so so i think that's also important to say it's, it's not all for us youth platforms youth organizations do all the work and reach out to young people local regional and national let's say uh, politicians again decentralizing that that that, that hub of information to the local level all the way to the local level that it will really will facilitate young people to get engaged like er, er, Erasmus Plus projects lots of people in my hometown got engaged because it was someone local there informing young people how to get involved in Erasmus Plus projects political same thing you need to go back to the local there's no point of centralizing all the information in Brussels it has to be decentralized to every single local authority around Brussels I'm oh, sorry around Brussels around Europe and of course digitalization is the most important part it, which you're also working on of course yeah i mean it's a big tool uh, that that can be used for good but At the end of the day, I still do believe that one of the best things comes to peer-to-peer, face-to-face communications. Um, so that's how most people get engaged, really, when it comes to volunteering or going abroad. Is that they heard from a friend, from a friend, from a friend. Initially speaking, of course, there can be a lot, lots of campaigns um, going around, and well, through the all, awesome platforms we have now, social media um, and everything, there are a lot of opportunities to do that. It has to be better used, but then we know that. let's say institutions uh, governmental institutions aren't the best at using social media and political platforms because then of course you have lots of hurdles you need to go through you have political interests you have platforms that are made from other countries and you cannot use you have gdpr issues with anyway so it's it's not always easy uh, so that's maybe is for youth organizations but again local authorities most of the time have social media and and they're a bit more free to say what they want to say uh, they're not as restri- uh, as restricted than eu institutions so again that's their role they can do it they can share information they can reach out to young people and and they're the ones essentially that that should be the pie is in reaching out to these um we like to call them um the non usual suspects so yeah okay so we have discussed about the engagement down to the regional level with regards to reaching out to the young people uh, i still want to go back to the issue of underrepresentation in the EU policy making process. You mentioned already before about the systemic barriers that makes it more difficult for the young people to actually involve themselves in the political process for instance to run as 
candidates. Uh, they face this uh, barriers of cost of campaigns, for instance, or the eligibility, eligibility rules of the candidate of the selection processes. And in addition, there's also a lot of this negative perception of the involvement of the young people in politics due to, for instance, lack of sufficient experience or them just not being taken as serious. I can also say this about Indonesia, for instance, like the youths are more seen as a commodity, like political commodity, rather than regarded for their political aspirations. What do you think about the idea of youth quotas as an affirmative action addressing the issue of this uh, underrepresentation? Because there's a lot of buzz around uh, the idea of youth quotas in the politics, in politics. So first of all, so you said we have the eligibility criteria. So it is complicated because when it comes to when we say vote the age down to sixteen, we also mean uh, young sixteen year olds being eligible for local, national, regional, even international elections, uh, EU elections, um, if they want. So it's not just being able to vote, it's also being able to represent and present yourself uh, politically. Uh, when it comes to culture now, we don't... <laughs> it's a complicated question about quotas. Um, we don't have a specific position around quotas. Now, that said, on a personal level, and then I'm speaking for myself, I'm not speaking on a level of anyone, um, I do believe... It is complicated because then at the end, quotas does not resolve the issue of culture. Let's say the culture around taking young people seriously, that will not resolve it. Uh, some countries, that there is something to be claimed that when you implement them first, it takes like a buffer time, a margin of people to get used, and then it gets implemented into the culture. I've, I've heard that argument quite a few times. When happened, I think, believe in Bulgaria, when they uh, inserted quotas for women participation, and then it gave that buffer time indeed for the culture to be more used to getting women inside, and then when they took them off, Actually, women start getting more elected. So, so I think that there are two ways of 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 of, of seeing things. Me personally, um, I'm not too keen on them. But again, um, I don't believe we as a youth forum have a, um, have a specific position on that. So I will not be speaking again in it. Well, anyone just myself in this case. Uh, but yes, it is a it is an interesting concept. Um, maybe test it out. So there are some localities that have been testing out specific like political prototypes. Uh, like the youth test, there are some localities that are actually implementing the youth test, there are some localities um, that are implementing uh, vote 16 and all of this, so it can be tested down on a local level and then see how it works out, but then again, we need to be careful, something that works on a local level doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work on an EU level or national level, so there are, there are lots of questions around that, I, I don't think we found the actual answer yet, um, I just think that first, before we get to radical measures like that, I would like people to think more about how to culturally involve young people and take them seriously out of themselves and not them being forced to have to involve them. Um, because I don't think politics should be of, um, let's say, who has the strongest stick or who's more, or who has more privileges around politics. I think we all should get the same sort of privilege, the same sort of access and activities. And the issue is that young people don't get that equal access. That's the problem here, that they don't have the same equality opportunity as the other demographics within politics. So that's the main issue here. It's not about... Let's be. Let's get our own space. No, we want to be in the same space as other demographics because we believe that we also have good ideas. There are very good young people, pe uh, competent young people out there, and we, we just did a campaign now on social media to say what we 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 asked all our all our membership. What do you do when you were sixteen? Uh, to actually push towards voting sixteen and political representation at sixteen, and they all came out with these amazing stories, like young people that did very good things when they were sixteen years old. And, that for me, he's as or she is as uh, legitimate to represent people, not just young people, but people um, in politics as any other 35-year-old, 40, 50-year-old. Because when you hear the things that they've achieved, the, the competence that they have, they're just as uh, ready.